Hi, welcome back to Mallory in the Library, or if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be talking about pancakes and mooncakes and fry bread and baking. And so I hope that you enjoy these stories to start off your week. And if you do have a snack, and especially if your snack is something tasty like what we're going to be talking about, I would love to hear from you. Uh, in our chat and comments. So the first story we're going to read is by Kirtu Celeste and it is called It's Pancake Time. We have a spoon, a bowl, and a frying pan. Pretty Hen gives us some eggs. Thank you. Crack. Break them into the bowl. Bouncy Bunny brings some flour. Add it to the eggs. Stir the batter well. Add a pinch of salt, but not too much. Don't forget a spoonful of sugar. Mmm, sweet. Friendly cow gives us the milk. Slurp, pour it into the bowl. Squeeze a good glug of oil into the pan. Uh-oh, it splatters. Swirl the batter in the pan. Fry one side, flip it over. Let's make lots. Spread some jam on top. Yum, yum, yum. All gone? Wow! Don't be sad. Let's make more pancakes tomorrow. And so I think most people do eat pancakes for breakfast, but sometimes they are fun to have at dinner time as well. The next book we're going to read is called A Big Moon Cake for a Little Star and it's by Grace Lynn. And it says, For Hazel, my own little star, special thanks to Renita and the McNeely family. Little Star's mama laid the big moon cake onto the night sky to cool. Now, Little Star, mama said, your moon cake took us a long time to bake, so let's see if you can make it last a while. Can you remember not to touch this big moon cake until I tell you? Yes, mama, Little Star said, nodding. And Little Star remembered as she brushed her teeth, washed her face, snuggled into bed, and fell asleep. But in the middle of the night, Little Star woke up. She forgot everything her mama had said and only remembered the big moon cake. Pat, pat, pat. Little Star's soft feet tiptoed to the big moon cake. Mama noticed if she took a tiny nibble. Little Star didn't think so. Mmm, yum.
But was someone coming? Little star flew back to bed. The next night, Little Star remembered the big moon cake again. That one bite had been so sweet and tasty. Was the cake still there? Yes, it was. There was that big moon cake, an almost perfect circle, all alone and delicious in the sky. Would her mama notice if she took another Tiny nibble. Little Star didn't think so. Yum! Little Star flew back to bed. And the next night, what do you think Little Star remembered? The big moon cake, of course. Would Mama notice if she took another tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Yum. And the night after that, what did Little Star do? Nibble, nibble. Yum. Night after night, Little Star took tiny nibble after tiny nibble of the big moon cake. And look, it kind of looks like all the phases of the moon that we see uh, even here. Until one night, Little Star's mama went looking for the big moon cake. Where was it? It was gone! Instead of a glowing round cake, there was just a trail of twinkling crumbs. Little star, her mama said, shaking her head, even though her mouth was curving. You ate the big moon cake again, didn't you? Little star looked up. Her grin was reflecting in her mama's smile. Yes, Mama, Little Star said, nodding. Now, let's go make another one. And there they are. So that is such a fun story because it talks about um, baking things with their mother. And also, the moon goes through this whole thing every month. It disappears from the sky, and then go back to the picture. And then it slowly, 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 slowly comes back all the way like this. And then it's a whole big moon cake again. Before, I guess in this story, somebody comes and nibbles it away each time. The next one is called Fry Bread, a Native American family story, written by Kevin Noble Mylard My, and illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. And inside it says, Papa Goddess, me mama, and the keeper of all recipes. And to Urs, Nana, and all the women who teach us stuff. Fry bread is food, flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Fry bread is shape, hands mold the dough, flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy, like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove. The fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet. The bubbles sizzle and pop.
Bride red is color, golden brown, tan or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna or earth, light snow and cream, and warm rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans or soup. Smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekdays and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together, with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk, the stolen land, strangers in our own world. With unknown food, we made new recipes with what we had. Fry bread is place, Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado and California, cities and lands we call home. And lots of people in Canada eat fry bread too. Fry bread is nation, Abenaki, Apache, Arapo, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Ogala Sioux, Narangaset, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac, and Fox. Hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fried bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west, brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new, we come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here. Elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, to change, and survive. Fry bread is you. And so there's a whole recipe in the back for this one is called Kevin's Fry Bread. And so there's not many ingredients. There's boiling water, cornmeal, cold water, uh, instant yeast, sugar, sea salt, flour, and coconut oil. And um, so the authors go into kind of explaining all the words that they use, like fry bread is shape, fry bread is sound, uh, fry bread is food, fry bread is time, flavor, color, and so um, there's some great information about how important fry bread is to people in North America, and they say uh, fried bread is everything. Bread nourishes and comforts in so many cultures, religions, and communities all around the world. Its synonyms speak of sustenance and survival, dough, manna, money, life. They are loaves and leavens, bagels and braids, crepes and cakes. They are communions meant to be shared and loved with others because bread is not meant to be cooked for one. And so I, I don't know about you, but I love fresh bread. 
And I know that maybe lots of families were learning how to make bread last spring. And so if you did, I hope that you're still enjoying it. So our next story is called Baking with Dad by Aurora Cacciapuoti. Today is a special day because I'm baking with dad. We already have all the ingredients. It is important to choose them carefully. So it looks like they're gonna use raisins, lemon, flour, milk, but no spiders, no pencils, and no socks. Let's start. Crack the eggs. Ouch. Oh, someone got hit in the head with an egg. And then add the sugar. Woohoo! And now Mix, mix, shake, shake, and whisk, whisk. Next, flour. Lots of it. Ah, chew. Then we need butter and milk, right? Uh oh. Looks like dad slipped on the butter. We'll need lots of fruit to finish off our creation. Be patient. Let the magic begin. I don't know about you, but I love to watch my baked goods in the oven, and more, I love to smell them. Time to decorate. Ding dong! Quick, quick! Hmm, what could be happening? That looks like a very special birthday cake. Happy birthday! And there is a whole party. And then the bottom it says, Dad, are we going to bake again next week? Oh, it looks like they had to tidy up too. So those are our stories about baking and pancakes for today. But we have a little bit more time and I have a lot more books. So I think what we're going to do is go into the bag of books and see what we have. So next week I was going to talk about wolves and last week we talked about dancing and I had a couple more dancing books that I wanted to share with you that we didn't get to because um, we can't share all the great books that we have. So sometimes if we have some extra time we can do this. So this one is called the Medicine Wheel, Stories of a Hoop Dancer. And we'll learn about what that is um, in the book. And this one's written by Teddy Anderson and illustrated by Jessica von Innerbrenner. And it said, 
This book is dedicated to the child who dreams of a better world. And it also says, 2017 approval given by Elder Toya Heka Inajin or Kevin Locke, which means first to rise. And 2014 approval is given by Elder Matawaken Shante Washte or Dwayne Ward, and that means um, Sacred Bear Spirit Good Heart. Sometimes to share stories, you have to get special permission. And that can be if you're sharing a story about someone else's life, like when someone writes a book about someone else, or if you're telling a version of a story that someone else wrote, but you want to change it a little bit, you might need to get their permission for that. Or stories like this. A young boy sitting with his Mushum grandfather asks a very important question. Mushum, what's that wheel around your neck? That's the medicine wheel, says his Mushum. What's the medicine wheel, the boy asks. Why don't you go get the others and I'll tell you a story, says his Mushum. Okay, Mushum, says the boy. The boy hops on his horse. He rides all around the world, picking up his friends. Excited to hear his Mushum's story, he gallops as fast as he can. The young boy and his friends soon return to the place where Mushum is waiting for them. I want to tell you a story about the time before the world was won, before the end of war, and before the end of hate, explains Mushum. And look, we can look at all these different people, all these different kids and their clothes, and they it looks like they're from all over the world. This is the medicine wheel. Many First Nations people of North America use this symbol to live a life of harmony. Do you see how the four colors work together as one? These colors represent the four great nations that live on the earth. The medicine wheel, having all four colors in balance, teaches us that all people should live as one family. There was once a hoop dancer who saw the medicine wheel this way. He used the teachings of the medicine wheel to unite the people and nations of the world. Hey, that doesn't look like North America. This looks kind of like, maybe it's the Great Wall of China. The hoop dancer taught us that there is no darkness in people. Like the sun that is always shining, we must see light and good in every single person. Where does that look like that you could see elephants, giraffes, meerkats? The hoop dancer taught us to help one another. He taught us to walk the path of love and friendship. He taught us that at the end of the path, we will live together as one family. And maybe we know where that big tower is in Wales. The hoop dancer taught us to be aware of our roots. He taught us to remember who we are and where we come from. When we do this, we grow tall and proud like trees. When we do this, we stand on Mother Earth like a mighty forest. The hoop dancer taught us to learn from our elders as well as our teachers and friends. When we use this knowledge to help other people, we blossom like beautiful flowers. And this picture looks like it's in a place very far away. Um, this is a really special rock called Uluru in Australia. And this is called a didgeridoo. And maybe you can ask a parent to play you uh, some music of what that sounds like. It is very beautiful. The hoop dancer taught us that at the end of our journey, no matter where we come from, we all belong to one human family. The colors of the medicine wheel work together as one. With a spiritual eye, we see all the people on earth as brothers and sisters.
The people of the world are like the colors of the medicine wheel. When we remove one, the balance is lost. The hoop dancer taught us that together there is nothing we cannot accomplish. Together we can build a beautiful world where every person is equal. The hoop dancer was a wonderful person who loved all the people of the world. He had a hoop to tell his story and a heart full of hope. Mushum, who is the hoop dancer? asked the boy. The hoop dancer was every child who grew up to change the world, to take the lessons of the medicine wheel into their hearts and make the world a better place. It was every boy and girl from every land who decided they wanted a future of unity, love, and light. The hoop dancer is you. And here is a picture of the author of the story doing hoop dancing in real life. And now that is a lot of hoops to dance with. I am not even sure how he's doing that, but it's very cool. And that is another thing that could be fun to look up and to share some videos of at another time. So thank you for joining me today to share stories about pancakes and fry bread and baking and mooncakes and one with dancing just for good measure. Uh, sometimes after you eat so many sweet things, bodies get really active. So maybe that's something that you like to do after you have sweets is uh, do some dancing or moving too. And so I hope that you join us next week. Next week, we're going to be reading stories about wolves and coyotes, which might seem scary, but these are not the big and bad kinds. These are the kinds that you might have even seen um, if you live in Toronto. So I think it will be fun to learn about these beautiful creatures that live right in our backyards with us. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next week. Bye.